We're traveling all over the country uh, at the moment in the UK and Northern Ireland, uh, coming and doing carbon jargon busting sessions and hearing great examples of local stories. Um, so that's what I'm here to talk to you about. Um, because there's a lot of different terms. Net zero, carbon neutral, carbon negative, climate positive. It gets very confusing about what we should be doing as individuals and as organizations. Um, very briefly, uh, I'm not going to go too much on this, but so uh, we're, I'm from the planet Mark, and we're a sustainability certification, not an events company, even though it feels like it a bit at the moment, because we're doing uh, a tour over 14 weeks, uh, all the way up to COP26 and beyond. And this is what it's all about, the Zero Carbon Tour. You may have seen the lovely hydrogen TransLink bus on the way in. Uh, we'll go out and take a photo with it all together later. Uh, but we're traveling across the country and we've got three goals. We're here to raise awareness about COP26. And if you haven't heard of COP26, go and look it up. But if you've heard of the Paris Climate Agreement, that was COP21. And we're here to talk about the Race to Zero campaign and Together for Our Planet. We're also here to gather carbon stories. And uh, my lovely colleague Amanda, somewhere around, oh, here she is. If you have a carbon story to tell, if you've done something, your organization or community group has done something to reduce carbon emissions, we want to hear about it because we're gathering tangible examples of action that we can use to inspire others to follow suit. And then thirdly, we're here to help organizations and communities set credible net zero targets. I'm going to talk a bit about what that means. And this is the tour. <laughs> we're going all over the place. It's, uh, we're on week five uh, of 12 in this leg, um, and we're traveling right across the UK and Northern Ireland to take this message out to people. Show of hands, who feels confident about what the scopes of carbon emissions are? Ooh, very few. Okay, so very simply what you need to know is, when we talk about carbon, we really mean all the greenhouse gases. It stands for carbon dioxide equivalent. You'll see it written as CO2e. And it does include methane and nitrous oxides and all of these things into one single metric because humans don't deal all too well with complexity. So we like to have a nice one focused thing that we can do. And the way that's done is it's based on how intense uh, the heating effect of a gas is. So methane, for example, has a much greater heating effect than carbon dioxide, but it doesn't last as long in the atmosphere. And so scientists use that, uh, those, those sort of figures to calculate this much methane equals this much carbon dioxide, and we calculate CO2e. And so there are three scopes of emission, and you don't need to know the whole detail, particularly of scope three, unless you're measuring <laughs> scope three, but it's useful for everyone to understand the broad differences between the three. Scope one is the fuel you burn. It's the fuel you burn. So it's your car, it's your oil or gas heater, because you're directly burning the fuel that's generating that emission. Scope two is the energy that you use, because you're not the one burning the fuel necessarily. That uh, might be a coal-fired plant or a gas-fired plant, or ideally renewable energy. Um, but that's energy you consume, and uh, you know, the fuel's being burned elsewhere, but you're still consuming the energy. And scopes one and two are seen as the things that we have most control over. Scope three is everything else. <laughs> it's your business, it's your traveling, it's your supply chain, it's the products you purchase, it's everything like that fits into scope three. It's very big, 15 different sort of areas of scope three. And the important thing to note here is simply that if on an individual level, if I was just measuring my scopes one and two, I'd be measuring my utility bills and my car if I owned one. I'd be missing out the food I eat, the products I purchase, the places I travel, if it other means. A huge amount would be missing. And so it's important to understand these things because the first question you need to ask yourself when you see a carbon footprint or when you see uh, a commitment being made by a country or an organization or a community, what was measured? What was measured, what is being measured is a really, really critical question. And that then builds what looks like a carbon footprint. So this is one of our members. And you look at, we've know, got the reporting year, we know the boundary, we know what emissions were measured from this, and you know the highlights and things that are coming from it. So you look for that information in your own company's website, in other organizations' websites, and in communities, and in national targets. Very briefly, I'm going to touch on carbon offsets, but it's really important to note, carbon offsets are not the solution to this problem. They are parts of it, <laughs> but the emphasis has to be upon reduction. There are two types of carbon offsets broadly. There is carbon avoidance. That is things like solar farms, wind farms, because a solar farm, if I put a solar panel out, it doesn't draw down any carbon emissions. It's not removing any carbon from the atmosphere. It just avoids more going in because it's replacing a much more carbon-intensive source like coal or gas or something like that. 
The second type is carbon removal, and that is things that actively draw carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere. So think trees, peatland, uh, seagrass. Um, yes, there are some limited technologies on this as well, but they are very limited, and by far the best bang for your buck is always going to be, I think, nature. Um, it's been doing this for a very long time, and it's quite good at it. So, carbon jargon. Net zero versus carbon neutral. The easiest way that we've found of describing this, and you can see, and the virtual audience can see across <laughs> to my right-hand side, is, okay, what's true zero then? And true zero would be going from 100% to 0%. You measure your carbon footprint, 100%, down to 0%. What net zero means is it acknowledges that it's not necessarily possible for all organizations or communities to completely eliminate their carbon footprint. Because if, I, let's say, I'm making a bicycle, if I'm making a product, right, there's going to be some embedded carbon emissions in that thing itself, and that it's not possible to not generate something. Carbon's not a bad thing, we've just got way too much of it. There's an imbalance that we need to address. And so what net zero acknowledges is that reduction is the key. You've got to reduce as much as possible, usually by 90% or more. But then that last little bit is what you use carbon removal offsets for. Removal makes sense, right? Because if you're emitting anything, the only way to compensate for that is to draw down the equivalent amount. So that's why it has to be carbon removal to qualify as net zero. And then there's a scopes one, two, and three requirement. You have to be incorporating as much as you can, certainly as much as deemed material, as much as is significant, in your measurement and in your targets. What net zero means, and net zero is governed by a piece of legislation called PAS 2060. And what, net zero, uh, what carbon neutral means, sorry, is uh, that you have you from today immediately, and you see the orange line on the, the left-hand side there you can offset 100% of your carbon footprint today using either carbon removal or avoidance. It has to be certified schemes, and that's important. But you can use either carbon removal or avoidance. And there's a minimum threshold of, of measuring and reducing scopes one and two, so the fuel you burn, the energy you use. But there's a risk here that if you're only measuring your utility bills and your, your cars that you own, you're missing a lot. And so carbon neutral uh, is, is, is one, one tool, but it's, not, it's a stop on the journey, but certainly not the end destination. And when we talk about carbon negative, climate positive, carbon positive, these, all these sorts of terms, they're much more poorly regulated at the moment. Um, but generally what people mean by it is that instead of purchasing to 100% of their carbon footprint that they've measured, they're buying two times, three times, or four times the amount of offsets, and they declare themselves carbon negative, climate positive. The key message that I want you to take away from this is that carbon neutral and carbon positive, all these things, they're great, they're wonderful, but they're not the end destination. The end destination is net zero. That is the journey we are all on, whether we know it or not. And all organizations in the UK have to be net zero by 2050. That's the law. You have to do it. And so this is not if, it's when, and it's about how ambitious you're gonna be ahead of that. So if I had 1,000 tons of carbon, if that I was generating, I would, under net zero, I'd have to reduce by 900 tonnes at least, and I'd have to offset that last little bit with carbon removal offsets 100 tonnes. To be carbon neutral, I'd buy 1,000 tonnes of carbon offsets now, and I'd be reducing my scopes one and two but as a minimum. And then to be carbon positive, etc., I would buy 2,000 tonnes, 3,000 tonnes, or 4,000 tonnes. Does that make sense? Excellent. So this is the net zero journey. Scopes one and two, you want to get them to zero. And you do that through things like renewable energy, electric or hydrogen fleet, uh, energy efficiency measures. Scope three, engage with the suppliers, waste reduction, travel hierarchies. The list is very extensive when it comes to scope three. And then your residual or unavoidable emissions, and you have to justify why they're unavoidable. That is what you then use natural solutions and, and carbon removal technologies to address. And so our call to action for organizations, all the leaders here today, is plot your path, plot your journey on that chart. When are you aiming to be net zero? And that will tell you, you measure your start point, you measure your end point, and then you map your path. You say, this is therefore how much I need to be reducing my carbon emissions per year by. That's what it means to set a net zero goal. And when you think about it, if we managed our money the way that we currently manage uh, carbon, we wouldn't know. You know imagine your CFO saying, I want, you to, I want you to reduce our budgets, but I don't want you to measure it. I don't want you to set any targets. I just want you to do things that you think will help. 
It'd be chaos. We wouldn't know whether or not we'd succeeded. And so it's really important that we make progress on this. And so we're partnered with the United Nations Race to Zero campaign. And this is what a good net zero target looks like. You can look, the slides will be shared with people afterwards. But pledge, plan, proceed, and publish. You've got to come up with a plan, and within 12 months, you have to get a 50% reduction by 2030 at least. You have to take immediate action within 12 months, and you have to publish publicly your targets to get your progress against those goals on an annual basis. You can make that pledge at zerocarbontour.com, or there are some sector specific routes that we would encourage you to sign up to as well, where you'll get sector specific support, and that's all in there. Uh, and so these are our three calls to action. Share your carbon stories. Amanda will be moving around, go and talk to her. We'll be circulating a written case study template because all of the country are now gathering these things together because we magnify our influence tenfold by sharing it with others and inspiring them to action. Make your net zero commitment. We have a range of workshops that are happening every week on a Thursday if you want to learn more about net zero. And finally, write what you want to see from our COP26 leaders. Get on social media and share what you want to see from COP26. And I will draw it to a close there. Um, thank you very much. And if you've got questions, I'll be on the panel. Thank you.